Hello and welcome to a rather impromptu video. Um, coming to work this morning to turn my soldering iron on to do some work and it is decided it wants to display EEE -E -E on the screen. It's a Weller EC2000 with a Weller uh, 1201 iron on it. The iron that I'm using is a fairly new iron but nothing's going on. So my first thought was I've got lying about a really old scruffy iron um, and I was like right, why is it doing this? What happens if I plug this in? I plug this in it's coming up with a temperature and working. Now temperature range is a little wrong on it but it does work so has the element gone? How's the thermostat gone? That's my question. So what I've got here is a plug off something that was junk. And um, let's have a little look at what we're getting from the temperature sensor. In this iron, we're getting a reading of 25 ohms at about 20 degrees C. If I swap over to the iron that I'm using, and I do the same again, I do the same again, I'm getting five mega ohms. That's actually my fingers. If I move my fingers off it, it's open circuit. <laughs> there you go, there's the five mega ohms from my fingers. So, we have a bad temperature probe. Fortunately, I have a spare one. I say fortunately because you can't get these things, they're just not about. Um, and before anybody over in America says there's plenty of them, yes, I know there is, but over here in the UK. Now, interestingly, this one is giving me 33 ohms. And um, I seem to remember that the impedance drops on these as they get warmer. So I warm that up a little bit. 34 ohms. Which would explain that other one giving us a rogue signal. So what we'll do next is we will disassemble this iron and go through replacing this and we'll test the heater as well at the same time. So I'm just going to put this out of the way and I'll be back with you. So this is a replacement and I've just noticed there's a part number on there. So I'm going to try and take a photo of that and we'll have a little look. So as we can see the number on there is F861. I'll just get the light off there for you. So we can have a little Google for that in a bit and see if that's anything that we can buy a replacement for. So that we tested a minute ago and it looks okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to disassemble the iron. We're going to start by removing the outer sleeve. I'm going to take the tip out. Now the difference with these tips and the, um, the magnostat tips is they don't have a magnet on them. Instead, there is a hole through the center of them where the end of the temperature probe sits to read the tip temperature. Put that back away. Next thing we've got to do is take these screws out from here. Okay, let's take the screws out. One, two, I'm just going to turn that soldering on, on because I know we're going to be needing it. Three, there's three screws here. Now the key with this is not to pull that because if you pull that it pulls on the cabling. You need to push the cabling and everything else out from the far end and then remove the sleeve. I'm going to pop that out of the way as well. 
Now when we look at this we can see we've got the heater assembly here. This heater assembly is the same as in any of the other well irons that run off 24 volts. There's the temperature sensor and that's spring loaded to keep it nicely in place. So the next thing we're going to do is I'm just going to check that the heater itself works. Twelfth of August 1994 this iron was made. It's sat in a box since then because <laughs> I brought it as new old stock. Okay, so there we go. Let's put this across here. And we're getting 11.6 ohms. Now, I think the last one I tested was 12 ohms. 24, 12 ohms at 24 volts draws 2 amps which will give 48 watts, roughly. And these irons are 45 watts, so that's the correct impedance um, for the heater. So what we want to do is just take these two wires off here, look. There's two cables. Okay, it's being a bit awkward, so let's disassemble it first of all. Little plastic clips, just gently and carefully withdraw. And we can lean this round here like this. Pop the spring off the back of there. Withdraw that. I don't see a part number on that one. But, you know, well... <laughs> That is our old stat removed. Now, before I go any further, I'm just going to put the meter across this and just confirm it's faulty. There's no, no numbering on this one or anything, so interesting. Right, put that out of the way. So we'll now reverse the procedure. There's a red and a black on here. There's no polarity. It is just a thermistor, a PTC or an NTC. Um, I quite honestly can never remember which one's which. This iron that I'm using is not very good. It's... it's um, the general abuse one at the main workshop. Okay, there's one. It might be better trying to solder that with it stood up. So I've got this held up right now. Hopefully, <laughs> he says. Okay, there's one side on. Ironically, now I've got the one side in place. I can use the other side to hold it. Okay. Put the spring back on the back of it. And sort of thread that back up through here. Gently does it. Now this went in like that, crosswise. Uh, two holes. I 
kind of feel as though this wire in here wants to sit above here this wire in here wants to sit below so we'll try that again like that like that like that like that okay that will then allow me to put the pegs back in the holes one peg there one peg there the springs come out but we can put that back in place like that there we go that's all going to move a bit of springiness there look so let's bring that back up here like that like so over all of that to give me a position to fix that back in and we're just going to gently drop it back into place now the strange thing with this is it will only go back together in one orientation see I've got it in like that and the screw doesn't line up so I need to turn it again that won't go in no they can oh yeah the cord grips getting caught be sometimes a little fiddly to get them all to go back in place okay put the screws back in it is just patience with these and putting them back together so okay let's put tape back on screw that back into place retrieve the base okay I've asked that to be 165 degrees it really thinks it's 185 at the moment 470 okay let's see what we get temperatures rising Bit of a disparency there. I've told it to be 460, it's currently 500. This thinks it's 180. I suppose the true test, test is does it melt solder? That is not as hot as it should be. No. So that particular sensor that we fitted in there is faulty. Interestingly, that's settled back off again. See, my iron, according to this, is at 184 degrees, whereas this is telling me it should be closer to 500. Um, now, I wonder if there's a calibration on these things. bit of a nuisance but here's my thought if there was a calibration issue okay 
right, let's set that for 300 and do a read on this one. Don't reckon it's 60 degrees at the moment. Hundred and forty, hundred and twenty on there. Obviously, this is a cheap Chinese fleur. But I tell you what, that's a lot closer. Okay. You know what? That's working right. Unfortunately, the sensor that I fitted in here is faulty. So what I'm going to have to do is go hunting for one of these. However, whilst I've not fixed it, I've kind of I've got it working by using another iron. It gives you an idea of how these should work and what you're looking at and when this error comes up. Um, what sort of things you need to look at to put it right. I hope this has been a little bit educational um, and gives you some sort of um, concept of where to go. Um, I have got some other Weller kit that I'm going to be doing some videos on. Have a good day. I've been on the internet to see if I can find a replacement using that part number. Um, they're just not available. I found the part um, as an old reference to it you know people that had had them previously and to be honest the sort of value of money that they were looking for was a little crazy so i think what i've done for now is put the the you know the comfort sleeve and the right the tip i use onto this and um i think we'll look for a new soldering iron but it at least will work for now and um it means that we can sort out the other problems that we're having with the um, the mechanical thermostatic irons so that's for the next videos but thank you for watching I hope this has given you somewhere to look at um, if you have one of these temperature controlled irons goes wrong I I can't see any way that it would be possible to take that apart unfortunately because it looks like it's been crimped here um, you know, because I thought, well, can we change the, the temperature probe inside it or anything like that? It doesn't look like it's viable. I will do a video and take one apart at some point in time, possibly. But yeah. OK, well, thank you for watching. I hope this has given you some concept and some hope of repairing your soldering iron. But for me, it hasn't. Thank you.